Many of the contributors to the Artist Gallery have drawn on personal memories of White Knights Park, and at the same time they have also hinted at aspects of the history of the estate. This relationship between art and history has stimulated us, Ian Byrne and John Granger, authors of the section on the history of the park, to create a virtual trail that highlights the historic features that lie behind the artist's contributions. The area facing Sheenfield Road is a good place to start because it's overlooked by Blanford Lodge and Old White Knight's House, two of the six houses and their leaseholds that characterised Victorian White Knights, as well as by some of the university's modern buildings. The Faculty of Letters, now named the Edith Morley Building, was the first academic building to be completed after the university had purchased the estate in 1947. It's on the part of the Marquis of Blanford's Botanic Gardens and was formally opened by the Queen in 1957. The university's Euro Museum of Greek Archaeology is located there and is represented in the Artist Gallery by a screen print of one of its artefacts, a bell crater. One of the interesting features in the history of the neighbouring Old White Knight's house lies in its first occupant, Alfred Wardhouse Senior, whose presence there drew his son to build a home in the park. The local businessman, John Hillis, was a later occupant. And an early use for the house in the university's time was as the first permanent home for the Museum of English Rural Life in 1955, an association which is represented in the gallery by a painting of a teapot from its collection. Some 40 years before the university purchased the estate, there was an arrangement for the university college, as it then was, to use an area of the park for athletics. This facility on a portion of land which ran along Elmhurst Road had been made available through the generosity of John Hillis and George William Palmer, at the time of the college's move from Valpy Street to London Road. This early association is recorded by the inclusion of a photograph from those days of tennis being played in front of the old dairy and also by a painting of the old dairy building as it appears today. A walk across the meadow to the footpath that runs along the west side of the lake leads to the rear of Fox Hill House a view of which is represented by a painting of the house as seen from the lake. The leasehold on which Alfred Waterhouse Jr. built his house was previously part of his father's leasehold. The view across the lake encompasses the trees, shrubberies, footpaths and lake dwellers which have stirred the memories of many of the artists. Beyond the trees and roughly where Wessex Hall is, there was another Victorian house, Early Park, built on a leasehold which included the site of Blandford's new gardens. The house was demolished in 1962. Continuing along the east side of the lake towards Early Gate, we've passed the north end of the Friends Bridge. The bridge is named in recognition of the financial support provided for its reconstruction by the Friends of the University, an organisation which is pleased to be associated with Jenny's book through a grant made towards its production. The way to Early Gate follows the drive that linked Sir Francis Englefield's original mansion, which was in the region of the present Park House, to the pair of Georgian gate lodges which still stand at the entrance on White Knights Road. During the Second World War, Early Gate was requisitioned by the government for the construction of a network of buildings which became known as the Temporary Office Buildings, or TOBs. Of the few that remain, TOB 1 houses the School of Art, which is recognised by an external view of one of its studios. Finally, the trail takes us through an area known as the Wilderness, named after the Victorian house built on that leasehold, which had included the woods that was created by Blanford. The house was demolished in 1950, but the extensive wood area remains and provides a pleasant walk towards an area which was the paddock to the house. Here the university created the Harris Garden, the peace and beauty of which is reflected in two textile presentations. There's much pleasure to be gained from merely turning the leaves of this attractive book, but why not also use it as a guide for your next, and maybe your first, a ramble through the park, or even to prepare you for the next White Knight Studio Trail.